where I'm like, maybe these are some sort of hybrids that are living there. Yeah, should have okay. should have tried to count how many teeth they have. <laughs> so it's interesting because it's. I feel like these things aren't awfully concerned with the hybrids because they look nothing like us, <laughs> uh, right? Like they. Like, well, they have similarities, but they don't look perfectly human. No, that's for sure. right? Like, and when you when we get into like the grays, the grays are the ones that are off trying to supposedly get hybrids, right? Because you get into the net and the etni and all that shit, and it kind of makes sense that that's us from the future. But uh, like, you tell us, that, you know, in the future we develop drill hands and fuck, yeah, <laughs> magic and you got, bombs. You got or... an old simple jack face. Yeah. Hey, there's every possible outcome and every possible reality. That's what's so we're going to turn here. into a bunch of fucking drill fisted, chinless sons of bitches, is what you're saying? Yeah. In some reality, that's what drill happens. Drill fisted, chin sick man. <laughs> uh, after these events, after seeing the the humans, which didn't seem shocked at all, and didn't really even take any notice, like uh, Carl said that he didn't even get a chance really to to talk with them because pretty much well, the, they didn't. The, I thought he said that it was like they didn't even know he was there. Yeah, right. Like he saw them from a distance, is what I saw. Oh, I okay. He, like he saw them from like a di- like a pretty not super far, but enough to kind of like make out what their ages were. You know, obviously as he mentioned, and um, but he didn't get a chance to talk with them or anything like that. They just kind of like were going about. Maybe, you know, again, if this is something that is regularly happening, then they probably just didn't really care because it's like, oh, they're just, just bringing in another yeah, person. <laughs> like maybe it's a, a regular occurrence. Just a regular everyday on, on the one's planet. The, yeah. Perfect. A new drill hole. <laughs> um so, I, you know, just as promised, uh, you know, Azo one uh, was returning Carl to, uh, you know, would return Carl to to Earth. And so Carl uh, recalls the, the return trip. Um, and on this trip, at least one of the events that, you know, uh, that stuck in his mind that he was recalling later, um, he said that, that Carl remembers um, that the, the Azo was actually like admiring his weapon, his, his, his rifle they had brought along with them, I suppose. And, um, you know, it, he remembers that Azo kind of referred to that. He's like, this is, this is pretty nice. It's a, for a primitive weapon. And like Carl remembers like taking offense to that. <laughs> Kind of be like a primitive. Buddy, like, I just bought it. This time, is a, this is the fucking Winchester. Take, I just bought this. <laughs> Buddy, this the motherfucker guy. froze your bullet, and then he goes to primitive, and you're going to be upset. <laughs> um, like, you didn't take offense to him drilling your ass, but you're going to take offense to him calling your gun, making fun of your gun. Okay, Carl. Um, and so. Carl also remembers that Ozzo retrieved the pills that had been given to him. Um, uh, and that, okay. that, that pack of pills that they had been, that had been floated over to Carl and Carl. The protein taken, pills. Um, Ozzo took them, took them back. Um, and, you know, and Carl said that he was also kind of miffed about that too, because he's like, this is the only piece of evidence, tangible that, evidence, yeah. tangible evidence that I yeah. would something really, really, that can't be the strange. We said there's tons of tangible evidence. In this case. Well, <laughs> well, we'll get to more sure. of the evidence here. Well, Some more of the um, oddities. Now, according to Carl, he was pretty much unceremoniously dropped on the edge of a pretty much nine foot Rocky incline. They just kind of like plopped him out. <laughs> they according just to Carl. Carl. Yeah. They yeah, just kind of threw you, him listen, out. Like, sounds like they just can't do anything for us. Out. We don't want to play with you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, Close enough. You're out. <laughs> Yeah, and he, he, I mean, he took a cash is on the nightstand. Yeah. <laughs> he took a pretty bad tumble down this one because they were saying that he sustained like a number of minor injuries. And after he reached the bottom of this, because he fell down it, like he, st- he tumbled down this nine foot incline. Um, and, but after recovering from, you know, this mental shock, you know, as somewhat, uh, Higdon says that he made his way back to his truck, which he determined, you know, from, from what he was seeing is that the truck was probably about three to five miles from where he remembered parking it initially, that the vehicle had been moved. But he was, a, he managed to, f- to find the vehicle, get inside, and then, in there, you know, in the front seat, Carl pretty much said that he collapsed 
uh, for for a time, just from the stress and shock of of I, what he had just. Experienced. I don't think it was from stress and shock of the experience because the experience like it's adds his, down. His, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought space withdrawals yeah. from whatever they gave yeah. him is what was happening to him because that's like he he doesn't describe the experience as like a truly stressful. Like he's pretty calm through the entire thing, and then all of a sudden he's back. Thing. He's just like he's all shaky. He can barely function. I thought it was like some sort of space drugs to allow him to function on their home or whatever. Well, even just travel too in the spaceship. Like he took him to their planet. You think that would fucking be hard on your body, right? I yes, mean, he was. St- I think he was still experiencing like stuff from that light that he saw. Like, cause that was still like messing with him. Like they were still, cause eventually when they would go to the hospital, like he would feel stuff. Like they was still being affected by that. The, the exposure to that light, that illumination, like had had some physical effect on him of some sort. Um, well, it's lucky too because he. It's lucky that you know in the woods because it's not like they had cell phones back there then. But Carl had a CB radio. He did. So he starts going, like unintelligible, like rambling on the radio, like begging for help, mm-hmm. and to the point where it's like they call his wife. I like some of his workers call his wife and they're like, Hey, do you know where Carl is? And they're, he's, she's like, I don't know. I, I, he, he's out hunting. He hasn't come back yet. Like I was a little worried, but I think he, he was going elk hunting. He may have gotten elk. And they're like, all right, we got someone on the CB radio. We think it's Carl. And he may need help. (laughs) They're like, no one really knows where he is. Everyone's trying to figure out what's going on with this guy. Because Carl was keying a mic. Ah! Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, Carl, you know, recalls being on this uh, on the CB, and he managed to get a hold of somebody, and they kind of, you know, they're asking him, you know, you know, who is this? Where are you? He didn't he didn't even know his name. Like Carl yeah. said that he was in in such a state that he couldn't even recall what his name was. Like he was, uh, he didn't know where he was. Um, he didn't know exactly what he was doing. Um, but he, you know, he managed to said that he he marked a sign. Um, you know, when they asked him where he was, and it was like Northern Border National Forest. But they said that that didn't really help them at all because it's like, well, it's a big fucking place, big fucking forest. <laughs> like, we don't know what national forest could be anything. Um, so, yeah. So, the, you know, they were concerned. It, it was it was later in the evening. Uh, you know, uh, Carl hadn't returned home or anything like that. And so a, Mind a you, it's, the same, party, it's the same night. It's the same like, it's night. The same yeah. night mm-hmm. Right. So whatever time it was now, like he left. Um, so there's still probably around midnight. Go- yeah, he got wanna, there about four is when he got there. I want to backtrack just a little bit to when he gets back. So he, because the story claims that his truck was three to five miles away from where he parked it. Yes. That's a long way to just not know where your truck could be if it's not where you parked it. So how, did he just like stumble down the road and it was, he just got lucky or like, cause that part of the story was kind of like, all right, it was three, three to five miles away from where I left it. How did you find it in three? To, you could have went any direction, three to five miles. See, I, I kind of thought. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, well, I think it's like maybe like after they after the fact, like he kind of said that was three to five miles. That's what I, I th- what I th- that's what I read too. I, when I was looking at it, I thought he was plopped by his truck. Right. And then when he figures out where he is, and later we know they have to retrieve the truck. He goes, "Well, this is not where I fucking parked my truck. <laughs> I parked it three to five miles over yonder." <laughs> yeah, but he still got to his truck, which is three to five miles away, because that's where the no. CB radio was. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm saying that he, he they dropped, dropped him near the truck. He dropped near the truck, but wherever oh. the truck was, the truck had already been moved. So in this, right. so they had moved his truck while he's aboard the spacecraft, and they plopped him back, but they didn't put the truck back in the right spot. It, yeah, it would yeah. seem that way. <laughs> okay. It would appear that way. I, it was, I was a little confused on where the truck, right, right. The truck so, got which, to where it was. Which makes me think that whatever this like cube of like si- the cube, the cone of silence <laughs> that they put on him, right? <laughs> if the effect the area may have included his truck, right? So like when he was brought back, like the truck just moves too. We'll get into that more later. But so like the sheriffs, a search party, search and rescue. They're going out to try to find Carl at this point. Like, right. his wife's right. like a they rat. went and got She's his, got yeah, a went friend. And his wife. Yep. <laughs> and so they couldn't even. It took a while to find Carl. Like it. T- it took them a while. They didn't even kind of figure out exactly uh, where Carl was and his vehicle until just before midnight. Um, but where they found it, like absolutely 
astounded the officers because they found Higdon's two wheel drive truck, uh, bumper deep in a pretty much like a mud sinkhole in the center out in a, out in a forest ravine that there is no real, like no practical way. Like there was. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.